Thanks for joining us on Champions of Care from Oakwood Healthcare. Today, we're talking about how to prevent a heart attack. And our guest is Dr. Walid Harb, a primary care physician with offices in Dearborn. Dr. Harb, yes. tell me about cholesterol. What's, what's all that mean and what are the right numbers and how do we have good cholesterol versus bad cholesterol? Absolutely. Cholesterol, um, is um, the importance of cholesterol is to know what type of cholesterol do you have. Um, and so triglycerides are important um, if they are above 300, 400. Uh, HDL, the good cholesterol, needs to be higher than 40, uh, and the higher the better. And the LDL, the bad cholesterol, needs to be as low as we can. Uh, certain conditions require uh, more tight control of that, such as diabetes, heart disease. In those instances, we have to get our bad cholesterol, the LDL, uh, below uh, 100 and below 70 in certain uh, condition. But what exactly is cholesterol? Okay. I mean, what are you measuring there? Absolutely. Cholesterol is actually a good thing that we have. It's a building block of our hormones, and so the body needs it. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes because of what we eat, sometimes because of genetic makeup, uh, what we inherited from our parents, we make too much of it. When we make too much of it, uh, it has to go somewhere, and it gets deposited in the blood vessels. The blood vessels get narrow and more narrow, and then uh, cause blockages. Uh, the most important places is in the heart or uh, the blood supply to the, to the brain in the carotids or to the uh, lower extremities, to, to, to our, our feet. So we get uh, the PAD. Uh. So is that cholesterol kind of an early warning symbol that my, my arteries, my veins and arteries are getting filled up with fat and I could have a heart attack? It's one of the signals. It is not the only one. What are some and of the others? The others uh, could be uh, smoking, age. As we age, uh, also we, we have, tend to have more uh, coronary disease. Family history is also important. So if somebody uh, have a family history of coronary artery disease, if they're male at age less than uh, 55, then that's, that's significant. If it's a female, if they have the coronary artery disease at age less than 65, also that's significant. And, and um, blood, blood pressure is part of this Absolutely. puzzle, isn't it? Yes, blood pressure, blood sugar, diabetes, uh, obesity, all of those are risk factors for heart disease. And um, you mentioned diabetes. Yes. Are there special correlations between people with diabetes and, and cardiovascular health? Absolutely. To most physicians, that having diabetes is equivalent to have coronary artery disease, even if they don't have uh, uh, a history of coronary disease. So once somebody have diabetes, we treat it as such. So our antennas are up. Uh, anytime they have any kind of symptoms, it's, uh, we can send them to uh, stress tests and other things. Uh, we put them on medications much sooner than if somebody does not have diabetes. So yes, uh, for all intents and purposes, it is an equivalent to coronary artery disease. Hmm. So um, in our uh, earlier segment, you talked to us about good health habits to have a healthy heart. Yes. We heard from Dr. Mancini about the signs and symptoms and how important it is to have communication. Now you've talked to us about some of these really important um, indicators of heart health. Now we're going to go up to into the field with our Champion of Care reporter, Tina Braid, to help us understand what happens when a doctor sees heart symptoms that hint that something more serious is going on here. So we'll be visiting with our cardiovascular lab at Oakwood Hospital and Medical Center and talk to cardiologist, Dr. Siad Jaffrey. I'm here today in the Oakwood Cardiovascular Lab with Dr. Syed Jaffrey. Dr. Joffrey is the director of the Cardiology Non-Invasive Stress Lab, and he's also a practicing cardiologist with an office in Allen Park. Here at the Oakwood Cardiovascular Lab, we offer a variety of heart tests. The simplest test is an electrocardiogram. We put leads on the chest and on the arms. That gives us information about the electrical activity of the heart. It gives us information whether a patient has previously had any heart problem. And then we have more complex tests, like an ultrasound of the heart, which is also called an echocardiogram, 
which gives us information about how the heart's functioning, how the walls of the heart are doing, whether there has been any damage to the heart from a previous heart attack. And the information also includes valves of the heart and that information includes uh, whether the patient's valves are leaking or that they become narrow and how the valves are functioning in addition to the walls of the heart. In addition to these tests, we also offer stress testing. When the patient comes here, we first check their heart rate and blood pressure. We do a baseline electrocardiogram and then if they are fit to uh, walk on the treadmill, we put them on the treadmill and we make them exercise to a, to a level where they start uh, feeling fatigue or shortness of breath or if you have any symptoms. And during the stress test, we monitor their blood pressure, heart rate, and the electrocardiogram to see if their response is normal or are we seeing any changes that would suggest that they have a heart problem. If the patient is not able to exercise, then we use a chemical stress test. In the chemical stress test, instead of the treadmill, the patient is given a medication that puts a strain on the heart by raising the heartbeat or making the heart the vessels dilate. And then we do the imaging with echocardiogram or nuclear imaging to get us complete information about what's the heart's condition. Here is an example of what we call as a dobutamine echo stress test. This is the baseline uh, image of the heart when we have not given the medication. This is when we are giving a low dose of the medication. And this, is, this quadrant shows what happens when the patient is receiving the highest dose of the medication. So what we are trying to do with this test is compare if there is any difference between the baseline and at peak chemical stress. And if there is evidence for heart problems, there will be a difference between the two tests. Dr. Harb, you're a primary care physician. What would you say to people who are watching today, what's the single biggest thing they should remember about keeping a healthy heart? I think uh, lowering their uh, risk factors, come and talk to their physician on a regular basis. Uh, let's partner with each other to uh, lower all the risk factors uh, from diabetes, heart disease, lack of exercise, uh, eating, um, uh, cholesterol. And so uh, that partnership is where it has to be. Uh, they have to come and, and talk to uh, their physician. Come and talk to us. Well, yes. Dr. Waleed Harb, if someone wants to come and talk to you, you have offices in Dearborn. You're an internal medicine physician. That means you're a primary care physician and folks can find you at oakwood.org or 543-WELL. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. It's and coming pleasure. up, we're going to be learning about small steps everyone can take right now to keep a healthy heart.